Hi, my friends. Welcome to Inside the Minds of Authors. I'm DC Gomez, your host and also an indie author. I'm thrilled you're joining me today for another fun interview with a passionate author. We're going to kick off this show with an exciting reading, so let's get started. Hey everybody, I'm uh, Thomas Webb. Today I'm going to be reading to you from my novella. It's the intro to uh, my Separatist Wars military science fiction series. Novella is entitled Enemy Lines. And I'm just going to read you the first few pages just to give you a taste. Chapter 1. Hale swung the parasteel wire mesh cage shut with a clang. He took one last look at the combat gear inside his 3 meter by 3 meter cage freshly stowed from last night's raids. Screw you, Wazalewski, Hale said. Waz, the most experienced scout on Hale's recon team, grinned. Right back at you, boss. Hale laughed and shot his sergeant the finger. The team room was always like this after a good night. With its duracrete floors, individual spaces for each member, and gear and weapons placed in their assigned locations with near-surgical precision, the team room was the closest thing to home they'd seen or would see for some time. Hale glanced around the area. His team of recon Marines was about as dialed in as you could get. He'd served with them for five years now and had been team leader for the past two. The same team sticking together for so long was unusual, but the brass had let Hale's team slide because of their outstanding success record. Hale was glad for that. Outside the immediate members of his team, Hale could count the number of people he trusted on a single hand. And as the Separatist Wars dragged on, that number only continued to shrink. The last op had gone well. They'd followed the trail of intel like breadcrumbs, hitting three safe houses last night in rapid succession before the enemy could get their bearings. This morning, they had custody of a high-level Separatist to show for the efforts, plus a shitload of intel for UNIA to sift through. Hale expected they'd have another operational assignment by sundown. In the meantime, he was looking forward to Chow and hitting the rack, then maybe grabbing a quick workout before the inevitable night's briefing. Sergeant Chuck Wazalewski, or Waz as the team called him, peeled off another section of his combat armor and stowed it inside his cage. He grinned. Scuttlebutt is that Chow Hall has actual, honest-to-God eggs this morning. Like from real earth chickens, Hale asked? He shook his head. I'll believe it when I see it. Waz turned away from Hale and set his sights on his favorite target. Hey, Taco, Waz started in. You even eat eggs? I can eat human food, the portly, pink-skinned EOD, or Explosive Ordnance Disposal Expert, said. The EOD technician's real name was Takro, a traditional name on his home planet of Salus. But the team just called him Taco instead. Taco was on loan from the Salusian Navy via United Nations Planetary Alliance Military Exchange Program. Stop giving Taco shit, Hale said. Remember when you tried to rush that tripwire door in that raid last week? Saved you from getting your ass blown off, didn't he? Oh yeah, Waz said. I forgot about that. Sorry, Taco. No apology needed, Waz. I know that you are a, what is the earth word? Taco scrunched his pudgy face in thought his rubber-like skin glistening as he searched for the correct term. Ah, yes, you are an asshole, Waz. That's the idiom I was looking for. Attention on deck, someone shouted. The room ceased its snickering and snapped to attention as Major Scott walked through the double doors. The Major exuded an air of restrained ferocity, all lean lines and hard edges. She was just shy of 40, porcelain skin and jet black hair buzzed short on the sides. The tilt of her dark eyes gave her a dagger-like glare. Semper Fidelis, Marines, the Major said by way of greeting. Semper Fi, ma'am, all the Marines in the room replied. The Major made a face that was as close to a smile as she could get. Stand at your ease, she ordered, looking around the team room until her eyes landed on Hale. I'd like a word, Staff Sergeant. Aye, ma'am, Hale replied. He followed the Major out into the corridor. Three French commandos passed by saluting the Major and favoring Hale with a nod as they went. The compound where Hale's team was located was also the same one that housed all the UN Special Operations detachments on the base. Hale and the Major moved away from the team room entrance and out of earshot of their Marines. When they were certain they were far enough not to be overheard, 
they position themselves to stand by the side, their backs to the bulkhead. So what do you have for us, ma'am? Something new on tonight's op? Hale had a good working relationship with the Major. She struck him as a good woman and, more importantly, an even better Marine. No, she said. This is something else. There is an operation slated for Razor Team tonight, but you won't be kicking indoors on this one. Have your team get some downtime. I want you in the briefing room set, dressed, and ready at 1700 sharp. Understood, ma'am, Hale said. What is this, some kind of training exercise? This is no exercise, the Major said. Your team's being spun up. And that concludes Chapter 1 of uh, Enemy Lines, the prequel to the Separatist Wars military science fiction series. Hi, everyone, and welcome again to Inside the Minds of Authors. And you guys are probably just as excited as I am. So we have the amazing Mrs. Thomas, and we're doing a little something different today. So I'm all excited. We're doing some military science fiction. Let me tell you, I feel like I'm coming home and I'm like, oh my God, we go straight military. Talk to us, Thomas. Welcome. So happy to have you. Thanks, DC. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. So let's start from the beginning. Where does this story come from? Besides the military part, because I want to know all about that. Tell us about the novella and then tell us about the series. I think military science fiction has always been maybe my first love as far as genre. I've got a background in the military as well as some law enforcement. Military science fiction just became a vehicle through which I could tell the kind of stories that you know I myself would want to hear, to read, and to see. The initial idea from this came actually from another series that I'd published. I'd planned to continue that, ended up not continuing it, but I'd kind of left off with some ideas for that main character. And that particular genre easily translated to military science fiction. So I just kind of picked up from that seed and, and sort of took it in a different direction. Military background, law enforcement right. background, what branch? Come on, just say yeah. it. <laughs> Marine Corps. <laughs> now that it was a hard guess of like, yeah. okay, we'll forgive you for this. It's all good. We're yeah. still my brother. I'll take it. That's right. Yeah, go Army, right? Hey, Army girl here <laughs> all the way. I, I'm not even going to like fly. I was like, hey, what can I say? Army all the way. That's right. What made you decide to start this series? How did that come about? I have a one traditionally published series. It's in the steampunk genre, actually. It's still kind of military, just in a different setting. I was contractually obligated for three books for that series, fulfill that obligation. And, uh, you know, after that, I was just kind of like, well, obviously I can complete a series, so I may as well try and do it for myself rather than a publisher. So that's kind of how it started as far as that. How many books do you have in this series right now? What are you looking for? So the current series I've got, the Separate Wars series, I've got the prequel novella which I read an excerpt from earlier. And then I've got two completed books that are available right now. Third that's in the works. And as far as how many I'll eventually end up doing, I could do three, I could do nine. Just kind of have to see how folks respond. And if, if people enjoy the stories, I'll keep going as long as they want me to. So this one is all about building your characters, building your audience and kind of going with the story so you don't have a kind of finish line for this one, which is kind of fun. Right. What inspired you to start writing? Talk to me about that. Well, I've always been a reader, as long as I can remember. I love a great story, uh, you know, whether it's a visual one on television or in the movies or, or it's something that uh, I'm reading in a really good book. I just got the idea that I love stories so much, and I, and I said, well, you know, I, I might have some stories in me. I think I could tell one or two, and it just gave me an opportunity to tell the kind of stories that uh, I myself would want to read, see, or hear. So when you're creating your stories, do you have a specific target audience? Who are you looking for? Is there an age range? What are you thinking about? So as far as a target audience, I think I don't have anybody specific in mind. Just folks that love good stories. My stuff generally has a lot of action. More often than not, it's got uh, some sort of protagonist who, you know, they were either military or law enforcement. So if that's something that uh, people can identify with, and if you are that person, then you are my target audience. How age appropriate is this? Can we say young adults would like it or are we looking at a stick with adults? What do you think? Probably uh, at least late teens, maybe young adult. You know, coming from our background, sometimes we do tend to swear or there might be some, some violence there or some sort of situation that younger kids may not be quite ready for. So 
It's always good to ask because usually like my definition when I think of young adults and everybody else is a little different, kind of put it in perspective. So if parents are listening and they're looking at their kids, I'm like, this would be a great story for Joey. Um, Joey might be 12. We might want to yeah. think about that. That's right. Tell us, what was the first story you wrote? Oh my gosh, the first story I wrote, I was definitely in elementary school and it was definitely in crayon. And it was called, <laughs> it was called Indiana Jones and the Temple of School. You know, there may be some copyright issues there. So obviously it's not in print. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that was the very first story that I can remember writing. And of course, I illustrated it myself as well. So I love it. You take your full <laughs> creative journey with this. That is awesome. That's right. Yep. You've been writing ever since. What mm -hmm. is your favorite part of writing? Well, I'm definitely a plotter uh, versus a pantser. In another life, I studied finance. I've got a finance degree. So I'm very familiar with Excel. So I actually uh, like to plot out my books in Excel. <laughs> you know I'm trying to put those two things together. I know Why? a lot of finance people, and I was like, your finance, I'm yeah. meshing the two pieces, but okay. That's right. It's both hemispheres of the brain kind of working together. Yeah, so my favorite part, I think, is uh, actually plotting out the book, finding okay. out how the pieces work together, how everything fits. You know, oddly enough, using Excel, I can move the pieces around as I need to. It's pretty simple cut and paste kind of methodology there. So when you're getting ready to start, are you doing a complete outline or are you kind of giving yourself some room to do a little pansy in here or you just literally have your entire outline and you're going, this is where we're going from start to finish? So the outline's pretty complete. Oftentimes as I write, probably just like most of the rest of us, things will come to me. Generally, it's not anything that's going to change the structure of the plot or the outcome necessarily. Uh, usually it's just fun details that I like to add, uh, you know, both for the reader and for myself. As you're working on your series, where do you get your ideas from? Like, where did this, like, oh, this would be great to add into this book? How does that come about? Mm -hmm. uh, so many places. Walk down the street and it feels like sometimes ideas are just, you're being bombarded with them just as you go. I get a lot of inspiration from, uh, obviously, my past experiences, you know, other things that I've seen or read. You know, sometimes it's a snippet of a song or a headline or a story from NPR. Anything can be a source of inspiration as, as far as that goes. Is any part of you in any of your characters? So, or it's just a little bit of you in everything you write? Yeah, I mean, I would say that there's got to be a, at least a grain of the author in most of the things that we write. Not 100% of the time, and not all the characters, but there are certain characters that uh, you write and you can say, well... Yeah, this is definitely <laughs> this is definitely how I would react to the situation or how I would feel about this particular occurrence. I think there's a little bit of us in in everything that we do, although maybe the fun part is kind of finding like what that is, how it fits in. That is a really great way of looking at it. I like that. You write in multiple genres. What other ones do you write in? Yes, I write in. It feels like a little bit of everything at times. The first series that I wrote was steampunk alternate history kind of still military thriller but just in the steampunk genre currently i write in the genre of military science fiction i've also just started a uh kind of a fantasy series like a military fantasy series i've got one novella out for that and then if you branch off into short stories gosh i've got urban fantasy horror military sci-fi it just runs the gamut. So I've got several different short stories that are out there for general consumption as of right now. You do have a little bit of everything is different realms. You'd said military science fiction is your favorite. Why? Besides your background, what is it about it that it makes it your favorite? Yeah, I think probably because of that, it's just the easiest to write in. You know, like you said, it feels a little bit like coming home when I write in that. And the words just flow easily, the dialogue. I mean, it's stuff we've experienced to some degree so it's pretty easy to put put it down on paper it's interesting because i've been out of the military for so long but you started talking and i understood everything i was like oh my god do right. we ever lose that do yeah. you feel that is something that you lose that you just officially still in the back of your mind i think like you said i think it's always there i've been out for a while myself now you know since the early 2000s so but it never leaves you as you started talking i was like oh yeah I'm there. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. 
it's still the same world. So it's kind of fun to listen to it and having you bring this to life and kind of that conversation. And I like the fact of the aliens and Earth and the combination of it. You did have something that caught my eye. You said, you know, real eggs from Earth. Does the military actually have real eggs, period? Because the <laughs> army didn't. Do the no. Marine Corps have real eggs? No, just those delicious powdered ones that we, we all loved so much. Tell us a little bit about the projects you're currently working on, because you have so much on your plate. Give mm. us a little bit. What, what's going on? Right. Right now, working on book three uh, in this, the Separatist War series. So that is in progress. We're maybe about 60% through with my first draft. At the same time, I'm working on a series of military fantasy novellas. I'm just about done with the second one. I'm usually shooting for page-wise, maybe 70 to 80 pages per. Uh, there might be nine parts to that when I'm done. The first one's out, and the second one's in progress. And, you know, I'm always also working on keeping in touch with readers through my weekly newsletter, the usual kind of author stuff, actually. Do you prefer to write novellas? What I like about novellas is that it's kind of like a quick hit. It's like a fast punch, right? You're in, you're out, you're introduced to the world, you get kind of the satisfaction of having that completed. I don't know that it has the same impact always as a full-length work, so I kind of like to do both. With this fantasy series, I just felt like the story would be better served via novellas. Depending on the project, that might change. For example, like the Separatist War series, I, I like the full-length works for that one, with just the novella as the sort of entry point. This is not something that you're going, I'm sticking one one side to the other. Is whatever fits your story. Right. That's exactly right. I, I like the combination we have going. Do you have an author that you admired? Yeah, I have a few. You know, probably top of the list is Stephen King, which might be the top of everybody's list. He's one of the greats. I really enjoy Vince Flynn. He's probably my second favorite. And for folks who aren't familiar with Vince Flynn's work, he writes sort of military-style thrillers. CIA assassin type stuff. As far as science fiction, I'm really a fan of Tavia Butler. Uh, she's one of my favorites. And then for the short story genre, probably got to be Neil Gaiman, who, in my opinion, is a master of the short story form. I like the combination of all three. I was like, that is really, really fun. You actually yeah. have everything covered in there. That's pretty awesome. Do you have a book that has influenced you? Yeah, you know, there's a few, I think. Definitely On Writing by Stephen King, which is, uh, it's nonfiction, but that's the first book I read when I decided, you know, I think I'm going to give this writing thing a try. It's kind of like a step-by-step -step guides you through the process of actually getting the words down on paper. Like most people, probably The Hobbit was a big one. Roots was a big one, actually. Believe it or not, Alex Haley, the masterwork. Fiction, nonfiction, it, it kind of toes the line between those two. I think it's, it's his interpretation of history, that one for sure. And that's heavy reading. So if you want to check that one out, you have to kind of you have to prepare yourself. <laughs> I'd say those are probably the biggest three. I like your combination. You have such a huge array of things, whether it's your authors that you're following or your books. It covers so many different genres and many different ways of seeing the world. So that's kind of exciting. Yeah. like the combination you bring into this. I'm like, that's really fun. Yeah. What was the first lesson you learned when you decided to become an author and start publishing, whether traditional or independent? So I actually started that first series that was traditionally published with the intention of publishing it myself. It just so happens that I submitted it someplace and it was picked up. But uh, the first lesson that I learned as far as writing is the amount of discipline it takes to sit down and do it. My background, I'm, I've always considered myself a fairly disciplined person you know, having come from the place that I did. But, uh, you know, what I didn't realize is just how hard it is to to sit down and write an entire book. You don't realize when you're reading, especially if the author is a good one, the words just fly by. But when you actually sit down to do that work, you realize that, you know, every period, every comma, every quotation mark, every word, you, you've actually got to write it, <laughs> which uh, intuitively you don't understand that if you're just a reader. But that's a real thing, putting those words down on paper. It's harder than I thought, but, you know, I will change it. I like that honesty that you bring into this, because that's one point of view I haven't heard, is the yeah. reality of being disciplined. Yeah. It's really easy to put it down and not pick it up, and it's really easy to say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. That's right. How long did it take you to write your first novel? Oh, that first one. Wow. It probably took... Uh, 
a year and a half to write that thing. And that's just because I wrote it the first time. Honestly, it was a first draft and it was terrible. As first draft should be, in my opinion. I wrote it again and then I wrote it a third time. Before I had kind of my process down, it, it took a while. Like I think for any writer, it probably takes some time for you to find your own process. But once you do that, the time from original idea to finished product is reduced pretty dramatically. So you have found your flow. You have found the way that you enjoy writing and kind of getting into that consistent process. How long does it take you to write a book now? If I'm just writing one book, (laughs) which I'm not doing now, (laughs) I can probably get it uh, from original concept to completed polished manuscripts about five months. That's a very good time frame. The reality is you do multiple things at the same time is what you're telling us. Yes. So it won't be five months. (laughs) So here's the real truth behind it is you've got multiple things you're trying to do at the same time Mm -hmm. and juggling them all. That's right. Yep. We at least got to the root cause. I'm like, "Mm, there's a little more you're not telling us here. (laughs) Yeah, that's correct. It makes you feel better. I was like, what does that mean if I'm writing one? I am tracking. So tell us, darling. If you can give an advice to a barring author ready to start this process, what would you tell them? Mm. So the first thing I would tell anybody that wanted to start out is obviously sit down and write your, your story, your book, your story, whatever you've got. And then you want to focus on the craft. It just goes back to on writing. That Stephen King book I mentioned before. It's an excellent guide for getting started. Write your story, work on your craft. If the craft is there, generally everything else will follow. Another way to look at that is if the craft is not there, then there's not going to be an audience for your writing. If if it's of poor quality, if you haven't done your due diligence, if you haven't put in the work. Uh, But if you have, everything else kind of falls into place. Your audience, marketing the book, finding someone to publish it. All that stuff flows, I think, from the craft and from a, a quality finished product. I really enjoy that. That's pretty nice. A lot of the times we tend to forget. I think writing is both art and craft and yes. sometimes we pick one side over the other instead of trying to give you a nice merge of everything so are you ready for what's coming up next yeah you know i'm a fan of your podcast so i think i know what, <laughs> what's, what's coming yeah at least you didn't give me that look of pure fear <laughs> that i get every time they're like oh my god no she didn't so we're going to do lightning round okay that's right yep so i'm getting some creative questions lately i was like "Ooh, that could be really fun Okay. I think they're fun. Nobody else seems to think they're as fun as I think they are. <laughs> but I'm not on the other side, so that's probably the reason. Yeah. Easy. Don't think too hard on this. So we're going to start with some easy ones and then kind of go a little deeper. So are you ready? Sounds good. Let's start with an easy one. Okay. Fruit or vegetable? Mm, vegetable. Really? Okay. That was a different one. Yeah, I'm a... Uh... I'm a big eater, so I'd rather eat a lot of vegetables probably than a lot of fruit. So, Breakfast or dinner? Sticking with the food theme. Uh, dinner. Same reason. Okay. <laughs> so I can eat more of it. <laughs> Switching it up a little. Star Wars or Star Trek? Oh, man, that's so tough. I think I've got to go with Star Wars because uh, they got lightsabers. So. Okay, when you put it that way, I'm like, that is actually true. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a good reason. I do love Star Trek, though. Deep Space Nine was my favorite. Nice. So stick of a franchise. Are you a DC fan or are you a Marvel? Mm, DC is good, but I think I have to go with Marvel. And that is just because, uh, you know, the stories are just better. I'm pleading the fifth. Somebody might hurt us on yeah, that one. So I'm, I hate to put it out you. there, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no disrespect. I mean, DC's got some good ones for sure, but... Uh, I don't know, man. Marvel just has more of them, I think. That's a good way of looking at it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to get a little bit more difficult here. Okay. If you could be any villain, who would you be? Yeah, so sticking with Marvel, you know, I think I would uh, probably be Thanos. If I could be any villain. And the reason being is that uh, he was a bad guy for sure, but in his own eyes, he was right. He had kind of this... Uh, like this purity of purpose, power, like he knew what he wanted to do. He had this focus. He was kind of a sympathetic villain in that aspect. And I will say there was a big debate amongst me and my friends as far as like, 
why didn't he use the stones to make more resources instead of cutting people in half? <laughs> like, is that a plot hole? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you think about it too hard. Like, You're right. Um, that's an interesting villain, and you're so right. He has morally righteous issues, but at the same time, he had mm -hmm. a vision. Now, he was very focused about it. Definitely. Are you ready for our last one? Yes. Okay. If he had a warning label, what would it be? I'd probably say, uh, I don't know, warning, you know, if you don't like people, maybe this uh, this product isn't for you. I love people, so. Are you one of those extroverts out there? Wow, I, I don't know if I've ever considered myself an extrovert, but, um, you know, I, like I said, I love people. I love to talk to people. I love meeting people. So maybe to some degree, yeah, I guess. <laughs> technically qualified. Yes. Yeah, I guess that does meet that definition, right? I'm like, that sounds yeah. like an extrovert. Since you put it that way, right. <laughs> technically is where do you get your energy from? So if you get your energy from people, then you're an extrovert. Most yeah. introverts need some quiet time. So yeah. if you spend a lot of time with people and you get re-energized and recharged, you're an extrovert. Fair enough. Yes, <laughs> that's See, right. That would do it. The fact that you're like, I love people. I'm like, that's very extrovert. Yeah, Most intro right. of like, I like people in small portions. <laughs> yes. So yes, we would definitely put in the extra work category. Okay. Sorry, Thomas. It happens. <laughs> so tell us, where can our listeners find you? Where are you at? You have a newsletter going. It's coming out every week. Tell us, where do we find you? Where can they get a hold of you? Where do they get a hold of your books? Yes. I've got my website, which is uh, www.thomaswebbooks.com. You can go there. You can get uh, kind of free introductions to my work. There's links to buy my stuff there. You can check out my newsletter there. I'm also on Facebook. The Facebook link is the same, Thomas Webb Books at Facebook, I believe. You can catch me there. Those are probably the main two places, but uh, I don't make myself hard to find. Books are available on Amazon. You know, I've also got several uh, short stories that are out there in different places. The majority of them are available for free. So if you just want to try out my work, I'd say go to my website and check the links. And, you know, as always, I have to hear feedback from readers, you know, good, bad, otherwise. I'm here. I'm so glad you joined us. It has been a pleasure. Do you want to say anything to our readers before we go? Well, first of all, I'd just like to thank you for having me on. Like I said, big fan of the podcast. Really appreciate you. And to the readers, um, yeah, uh, you guys are the reason that we do what we do. We love to hear from you. We love to interact with you. We love your feedback. Reach out. Feel free. Like I said, I'm, I'm always available. I'd love to talk to you about uh, books, my books, other people's books, books in general, <laughs> anything. Well, Thomas, it has been such a pleasure. I am so glad you joined us. And to our listeners, thank you, everyone, for listening to another episode of the Inside the Minds of Authors. Stay tuned for another amazing author and some amazing stories. Bye, everyone. Thank you.